Okay, is Asaram Bapu fit to be called a spiritual leader? Should he get his head checked as Ranbir Kapoor there says? Joining me now, Shoma Chaudhary, Managing Editor of Tehelka. Also with us, Neelam Dubey. She's a follower of Asaram Bapu. She's part of the Asaram Bapu group. Rahul Ishwar, spokesperson of the Sabri Malai Temple. And Akar Patel, columnist, joining me from Bangalore. Appreciate all of you joining us. I'm going to come to you, Neelam Dubey, first because you have much to answer for. Do you now accept that Asaram Bapu must give an unqualified apology, ma'am. Rajiv ji, pehle to aapne bola hai ki Bapu ji ne aaj ye comment diya hai. Bapu ji ne aaj ye comment nahi diya hai. Dusri baat, ye comment hai hi nahi. Ye 28 December ki ko, jab Bapu ji Delhi mein aaye the, satsang karne IP extension ke maidan mein Bapu ji ne satsang kiya, aur lakhon ki bhiid wahan thi, kuch media person bhi wahan the. Wahan Bapu ji ne satsang mein ye baat kahi, aur is sentence se pehle ki, aur is sentence ke baad ki, puri baat agar aap sune, to aapko ye maksad nahi milega. आपको ये मैसेज नहीं मिलेगा कि बापूजी क्या कहना चाह रहे हैं। बापूजी ये कहना चाह रहे हैं कि उन दरिंदों ने प्लीज मेरी बात खत्म होने दीजिए। मेरी बात नहीं नहीं राजीव जी मेरे सेंटेंस पे फुल स्टॉप लगने दीजिए। उसके बाद आप जो बोलेंगे मैं सुनूंगी। मैं अब तक सुन रही थी। आपने बोला नहीं चढ़ना चाहिए था ऐसी बस में चढ़ती जिस जिस बस में कोई एक महिला बैठी होती या बस आधी भरी होती तब वो चढ़ती सेफ रहती दूसरी बात बापूजी ने बोली प्लीज आप मुझे बोलने दीजिए एक सेंटेंस खत्म होने दीजिए दूसरी बात बापूजी ने बोला अगर वो अगर उसने मंत्र दीक्षा लिया होता कोई भी मंत्र उसने दीक्षा ली होता तो वो मंत्र जपती तो उसको कोई ना कोई आइडिया सूझ जाता और कोई ना कोई आइडिया में वो डिप्लोमेटिकली इस सिचुएशन से बाहर आती फिर उन दरिंदों की खबर लेती बापू जी ने पूरी बात ये बोली है आप उसको तोड़ मरोड़ बापू जी ने मामला है इस सेंसिटिव मामले को तोड़िए मरोड़िए मत समाज को एक होकर के समाज से लड़ना है तभी हम इस तभी हम इस प्रॉब्लम का हल ढूंढेंगे वरना हम बिखर जाएंगे अन्ना मुहिम को एक लाइन दी और उसके बाद मीडिया वालों ने फिर पता नहीं क्या करा ये मुहिम भी एक मकसद तक जा रही है को हल दीजिए आप आपस में सबको बात ये है कि क्या कहा मैं मैं एक बार बोला आप बार फिर बोला मैं उन्होंने ये कहा था गर्ल इज एज रिस्पांसिबल एज द विक्टिम्स आर ओके बट इवन इफ शी बट इवन इफ शी लेकिन बापूजी ने बात नहीं बोली बापूजी ने बोला है कि उनकी बहुत बड़ी गलती है शराब पी के उन्होंने वहशियाना हरकत करी लेकिन अंश मात्र उस बच्ची से गलती हुई है वो जिस किसी बस में चढ़ गई मैडम let me just repeat what he says. He says, Jinone Galti thi Sharabi thi. Agar us Kanya ne Saraswati Mantra, Madam, one minute. Ya, yeah, main puri baat de raho. Main, main puri baat de raho. Agar us Kanya ne Saraswati Mantra liya hota, Guru Dakshina li hoti, to boyfriend ke saath picture dekkar jis किसी बस में घुसती नहीं अगर घुस भी गई तो छह शराबी थे भगवान का नाम लेती और एक का हाथ पकड़ती तेरे को तो मैं मानती हूं दो को बोलती भैया मैं अबला हूं तुम मेरे भाई हो धर्म के भाई हो भगवान के नाम लेकर हाथ पकड़ती पैर पकड़ती इतना दुराचार नहीं होता गलती एक तरफ से नहीं होती गलती एक तरफ से नहीं होती a girl has been gang raped, ma'am. The fact is, whether equally responsible or not, even to suggest that she was partly responsible, even 1% responsible, how can you blame the girl? To say, galti do, dono ki hoti hai, ya galti ek taraf se nahi hoti? How can you justify this, ma'am? Please. This is wrong. This is totally wrong. Rajiv, this is totally wrong. You are just me. He is misbehaving with the statement he has given. He has he didn't give any statement. It was a satsang that went on in 28th of December. You didn't Madam, cover did that. He say now this you have developed a situation. Did no, he no, say no, it or no. not? Rajiv, this is totally wrong. Did he this, say? You, what he said, have you heard it? Have yes. you heard it the entire satsang? Madam, Please, I request this is you, bad you enough. just hear the entire session. Please this tell me, what does he mean when he says Galti ek taraf se nahi hoti? What does he mean when he says Galti ek taraf se nahi hoti? I want to know that. What does he mean when he says Galti ek taraf se nahi hoti? Jab wo kehti hai, Galti ek taraf se nahi hoti, what does he mean? 
वही तो बोल दी वही तो समझा रही हूँ मैं आपको बापू ये कह रहे थे अंश मात्र उससे गलती ये हुई कि वो जिस किसी बस में चढ़ गई वो जिस किसी, किसी बस, बस में चढ़ती जिसमें ऑलरेडी कोई महिला कहीं से कहीं ले जा रहे हैं आप बेमकसद कर रहे हैं बात को आप समझिए बापू जी ने यह कहा था कि अगर किसी ऐसी बस में चढ़ती जो बस आधी भरी होती या बस में कोई एक दो महिला बैठी होती जिस किसी बस में चढ़ जाना उसके लिए खतरनाक हुआ ये बापू जी ने कहा तो वो खुद मान रहे हैं मैडम तो फ्रेंड था उनसे पूछ लीजिए वो कई बार रिपेंट करता है मैडम बट वाई नॉट जस्ट अपोलोजाइज पूछिए मैडम उस लड़की और मैडम गलती वर्ड क्यों हाउ कैन यू इवन कंसिडर दैट शी हेज मेड अ मिस्टेक शी इज अ गर्ल हु गेट्स इन टू अ बस and now you are saying she should not have got into a bus it is like virtually saying that she asked for it by getting into a bus with six uh, men ye kis tarah ki baat hui ma'am what is this wo 6 aadmi sharab piye the jo passenger nahi the yes. us ladki ko nahi pata tha ठीक है लेकिन जब हम मैं वही तो बोल रही हूँ उस लड़की को नहीं पता था yes. लेकिन जब हम ऐसी चीजों में जाते हैं ना हमारी इनर कॉन्शियस हमें एक बार रोकती है बापू यही कह रहे हैं कि अगर उसने मंत्र जपा होता तो उसकी इनर कॉन्शियस उसे कहीं ना कहीं रोक लेती इनर कॉन्शियस सिचुएशन में समाज को मीडिया को एक होकर के इस स्थिति से लड़ना चाहिए हमें बिखर के आपस में लड़ना नहीं चाहिए हमें एक होकर के स्थिति से लड़ना चाहिए हम हम बिखर मैडम मैं आपसे सवाल पूछ रहा हूँ शुड शी शुड शुड आसाराम बापू नॉट अपोलोजाइज शुड आसाराम बापू नॉट अपोलोजाइज शुड मैं आपसे यही रिक्वेस्ट कर रही हूँ आप जो एक घंटे का सत्संग है उसमें से टोटल दस मिनट दिखाइए इस सेंटेंस से आगे के दस लाइन और इस सेंटेंस से पीछे के दस लाइन दिखा दीजिए आपको क्लियर हो जाएगा मैसेज ओके लेट मी ब्रिंग इन शोमा चौधरी शोमा यू आर हियरिंग वॉट शी सिंग the uh, uh, ms dube saying we have nothing to be apologetic about please see our entire satsang and the fact is that we are blaming the girl partly for having entered that bus with six men in it who are drunk what does it show does it suggest a particular mindset which is unwilling to accept that a girl can enter a bus with a boy at 9:45 in the night yeah first of all you know i mean the entire idea that she should at all consider what bus she is get into or not is an assumption that you know this is a dangerous place but i think what i find even more appalling than the idea that she entered a bus that was not crowded and so uh, opened herself to danger is this assumption that if she had said some mantra and she had said brother to these men that they would have stopped i mean what is this kind of activistic thinking you know there are so many people who die on pilgrimages do their inner consciousness tell them they are all jaboing mantras when they go on some pilgrimage buses fall off the cliff and and they die, uh, and they all die on mass then their inner consciousness doesn't tell them that they should not be going on this tirth what is this kind of absolutely you know medieval thinking that these religious gurus are allowed to tell lakhs of people and another woman like miss dubey can even uh, subscribe to this that you know agar wo diksha lete to wo bhai bhai bolke unko taal dete in a diplomatic way she would have got out of the situation are we now supposed to assume that she was undiplomatic and that's why she was raped what are these absolutely untenable assumptions with which these people speak you know unfortunately miss dubey has now walked out of the program but i just want to for, for a moment go straight to rahul ishwar rahul ishwar what what is being reflected is is over the last few days a particular kind of mindset these are so called spiritual people how does a spiritual person talk like this that someone gang rape sir and the and she is being said you should have made them your brother or you shouldn't have stepped into a bus i mean this is carrying the public discourse to a new low that is the three points one as a believer and proponent of indian spirituality let me on my behalf on believers behalf tender an unqualified apology an unconditional apology for the statement and this controversy it was very bad that this happened and the girl is not even 0.0001 percentage responsible second point let us see the context and subtext every text has a context and subtext subtext as neelanji rightly pointed out this speech was not made 
made today it was made some days ago and the timing of the release of the speech and the yc so many things are there i would not like to get into that the third point we should not go for a confrontational approach we should understand that there is a particular mindset let us call it bad or good according to our own position but let us go for a reconciliation let us not go for confrontation no, no, we have a slightly what is the reconciliation what for, is what is the reconciliation that one can have with a medieval mindset that seems to believe that a girl almost asked for it by getting into a bus with six men who later on she finds out are drunk i mean what does it suggest and what does it suggest about these so called spiritual godmen i'm I am coming to that. Let us understand. Not only spiritual godmen. There was Muslim organization, Hindu and Christian organization telling that women should be more cautious. They should take more care. I am not telling women are to be blamed for rape. Absolutely no. But there is a different mindset which a majority of our people have. Let us try to talk to them. Let us engage with them and try to inform the young India's mindset too. There is no point fighting with our parents' generation or our elders' generation. We should try to make them convinced that the time has changed the world has changed of course your values we respect but there should be evolution to values there should be an evolution of mindset but i'm sad to see many a times media is playing like the youngsters versus old the spiritual gurus old. versus the progressives this anti attitude won't serve let purpose. me just let us try to engage with them and uh, try to for try for a cultural evolution Cult, you know this this idea of reconciliation that that you know we have to reconcile with these views there's a there's there, there are, it's a clash almost of of cultural values do you, do you at all go along with it that asaram bapu represents a particular world view and rather than confront it you got to reconcile and find a way out and a way forward no i i completely agree that this is a, a cultural clash there is a large uh, large constituency of people who believe this and you know all these articulations not just from the spiritual gurus but many of the political leaders that have been shocking in their statements there is a kind of cultural divide and but i don't believe that this can be reconciled it does have to be confronted because we have to just doggedly assert that we have agreed to organize ourselves as a modern democracy we are not living in feudal times and yes people can have those cultural views in the privacy of their own homes and it is to be fought in the privacy of their own homes by their own children and their own sons and daughters but as long as you're making an official comment I don't think there is any cultural relativism allowed because we have agreed to live by certain tenets in a modern democracy. It is absolutely not tenable for any political leaders to say this, and for spiritual leaders to say this is clearly to be out of step with time. But I'd I just like to bring to you, Rajdeep, that the Jamaat in Kerala, the younger, you know, the students' uh, Islamic organization that is the wing of the Jamaat, many of the younger Jamaatis in in Kerala are completely shocked by the recommendations that the Jamaati leaders have given to. is varma they feel that it is an absolute shame you know some of them called me today and said we'd like to put a towel over our heads in shame in fact i'm going to come to those jamaat uh, uh, the, the recommendation that the jamaat has made for example a dress code no to coed schools i'm coming back to that but let's look for a moment again at asaram bapu is he really a spiritual leader akar patel you've seen his large following in gujarat but is he to be classified as a spiritual leader really in any sense of the word given the fact that here is a man whose spirituality seems to mean that when a girl is is being gang raped in a bus she's got to turn to her inner conscience is what her uh, uh, his follower told us is this the kind of spirituality that asaram bapu has has been able to uh, promulgate that has attracted him such a large following he is a spiritual leader for uh, the people who follow him and there are lakhs of them uh, he comes out of a certain background gujarat has the highest per capita consumption viewership of cnbc tv 18 the business channel and of aastha so you have a very business minded but also a very conservative society what they are trying to conserve is family values such as respect to parents women should be part of the family keep the family together i think uh, the other part is that a lot of the uh, speeches that these people make are based on the bhagavad gita which says that the individual should ignore the outside world you know a lot of what you think is within yourself i think he was riffing on that and got a little out of hand he doesn't usually speak on such matters i think he's he's made a mistake he's not going to apologize um these people why, make why a would lot he not of apologize? money from the why, very why would asaram bapu not apologize 
for the people that he, for, for, for all those who matter to him which is his uh, following he is he's God and God doesn't make mistakes so if he does speak on this again which I doubt he will not walk back the statement entirely he will say that he was misquoted that you know the microphone didn't catch him properly he'll say he'll say something there's no way that he's going to say sorry for it you know but but, but somewhere uh, uh, Rahul Ishwar what are these men of God that many of you, I mean, you, you yourself are a trustee of the Shabri Mala and let's be honest, the Shabri Mala itself practices discrimination. Post-puberty women aren't allowed to uh, do darshan at the temple. There's a sense in a sense that you are sanctifying a division. You are creating a division wherein a, a, a woman doesn't have the same rights as men. And therefore an Asaram Bapu can put it in a wider discourse of his. But effectively what he is trying to say is that the woman... I dare I say it, virtually ask for it. And if she is uh, in a situation where men are sexually assaulting her, she should treat them as brothers. What kind of worldview is this? Ratibzi, you cannot compare apples to pineapples. Even though they sound alike, they don't taste alike. So the case between these two are widely different. Shabarimala has thousands of women visiting Shabarimala every year. Only young women are not allowed, only because there are some reasons. In the same way, there are many temples in Kerala. For example, the women of Shabarimala, Archigal, who don't allow men. But sadly, the media don't pick up these and say that it is a discrimination against men. That's a different issue. Let us keep this aside. But on a serious note, I appreciate the media for creating an awareness of change the mindset. But l let me repeat that point once again. Let us try to talk with them. Let us try to engage with them. As Shomaji rightly pointed out, there is a huge constituency. We are trying to engage with them. I talk to many Muslim youngsters, Hindu youngsters today. We are trying to engage with them and trying to convince them. And we should understand one more thing. Yes. They are forming their opinions based on 50s and 60s where they have spent their youth. But 2010 is different. 2020 is going to be different. But they have they huge followings. We respect they them. are individuals with values, very large impressionable followings. Society have different nuances. They are individuals with very large impressionable followings, yeah, which is have. what makes they them so have. dangerous. That, that's the precise reason why, you know, I was trying to uh, connect to them. I was trying to connect to Neelam and I was trying to connect to Asaram Bapuji. I would humbly request Asaram Bapuji, if he is seeing the channel, either uh, give a clarification or please withdraw your statements. Apology might be out of question, but still, uh, please come out with some clarification. Otherwise, it will be, you know, bring bad name to the whole spiritual arena. But, you know, on a serious note, let us try to engage with them. Let us try to convince them that the world has changed. Right. There are many values. Family values are there, sister other values are there, type of conservative values are there. Let us try to talk to them. If we are going for a confrontation like Neil and G went out of the show, they are going to disengage. You we know have what to the engage with them. They are not going to take the initiative. You know we, are, we should take the initiative so that we can bring them forward. You know, but the fact is, uh, Shoma Chaudhary, somewhere, Shoma, there is the, the question of a certain kind of religious conservatism. On the other hand, in the case of Asaram Bapu, this is not the first controversy he's got into. He's had several serious land grabbing charges. There Order. have been charges about deaths of children in his ashram. I mean, this whole thing of being seen as a spiritual guru who has this other life, it seems, which borders at times on criminality and now borders on a form of religious conservatism that doesn't seem to have any space for the modern Indian woman. I mean, does such a person have the right to be called a spiritual guru or should we simply acknowledge the fact that he has a large following and he's catering to the baser instincts of that following? Yeah, Rajdeep, it's, it's a very uh, piquant situation where, you know, no matter what we say, it's not really going to dent who he is or the kind of following he has because you're right I mean they're devotees from within the ashram who have pointed to the very very seamy kind of uh, thing goings on over there there are people who have said that you know his devotees have said we'll kill you and you won't be able to make out who we are because we are all dressed in white there have been terrible murder charges against him uh, you know the CBI didn't probe it but but people the parents believe that they were killed in tantric rites that happened within the ashram the point one is making is that you know we can in our debates just outlaw them as being feudal and atavistic they will still have that following and that's the same for Baba Ramdev and it's the same for a whole lot of other gurus who have corruption charges against them you know you you had the Shankaracharya uh, who also has a murder charge against him down south it's just terrifying that their following seem completely blind to them which brings us back to the point you were raising earlier that can one really engage with them or is it a path of confrontation 
I would say that, you know, by and large, these people are beyond the realm of conversation and dialogue where the issue of women and women's rights are concerned because they are doggedly patriarchal. So re what, what one really has to do is keep expanding the scope where women are seen as equals and as independent. And that will be through a path of confrontation, unfortunately. Is the, is, is the path forward, Akar, confrontation? Or is it, is it possible to have a dialogue with the likes of Asaram Bapu? I think you, the media should actually confront it, do exactly what you've done tonight. Yeah, a large part of Asaramji's uh, following will not actually accept what he has said. They think he's God, but they might actually go back home and actually reconsider what it is that he said. If they are faced with the other side, I think the media should do as hard as it can to sh every time that this sort of thing happens to show that these people are not infallible. But then, uh, but will, will that have any impact on his followers? Do you really believe that his followers have been affected by charges of land grabbing, charges of deaths of children, uh, charges now of, 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 of making the worst kind of slanderous statements against a, uh, against a gang rape victim? Do you believe that Asaram Bapu's following in any way is affected by the kind of controversy that, that he's been confronted <coughs> with, Akar? It will not be. There are two separate things here. One is how his audience views him. The other is how the audience views this specific issue. I'm talking about the latter. The former might not change and that's fine. I'm saying that we are talking about the specific issue of somebody not getting away with making the sort of statement he has. It's outrageous. Nowhere in the world, under no sort of law, under no religion, under no spirituality can this be justified. I think that needs to be communicated very clearly to them. I think the media is responsible for doing that. You know, uh, uh, Rahul Ishwar, let, you know, let, let's be clear, whenever questions are raised in this context, there is an attempt made that these people are above the law, that the likes of Asaram Bapu, if you touch them in some way, you are no. touching religion, you're, you're attacking spirituality, you're attacking uh, ancient cultural values. That's the kind of defense that the likes of Asaram Bapu and his followers give. Would you agree that Asaram Bapu gives a bad name to religion, to spirituality, when he has made statements like this? He has defiled both religion and spirituality by claiming, uh, by, by making the kind of statements he has today. Two things. I hope Asaram Bapu will come out with a clarification and I am waiting for his re-evaluated position. Second, all our law, all our culture. Let me say this without any uh, ambiguity. 5000 years back, Manusmriti may have been relevant. But in the modern times, it can be evolved into, it can be remodified as Pida Rekshadi Kaumare, Bharto Premati Yavane, Putros Nehadi Vartake, Hastri Unnada Stana Maharadi. We respect women more than man. We didn't believe in equality because we thought women were higher. And if somebody is going against that position, they are going against Indian cultural values and ethos. Let us try to engage with them. Let us try for a dialogue. Let us try to convince them rather than confront them. Why? why unless they are confronted, they have to be exposed. If I, why should I have a dialogue with someone who, who you know, who, who makes these kind? Shouldn't he be exposed? If he's a land grabber, if he's molesting, uh, uh, if he's accused of having killed, been responsible in some way for the death or mysterious disappearance of children, and now making these kind of statements, why should he not be exposed? Why should I? Why should people engage with Asaram Bapu? They, they are they are different. They are, they are different issues. They are different issues. Nobody is above the law. Indian law is as divine as spirituality for me. And I, I believe Bhagavad Gita, Quran and Bible and Indian constitution are the four great books that we have. So I consider them as holy grants so that we should literally follow them. But having said that, let us not club other issues. This is a, this is a problem of an attitude. This is a problem of a mindset. This belongs to you know, some certain values which needs to evolve further. Of course, not only Hindus, Christian, Muslims and right. all seniors above the age of 50 i know many people who have these views let us try to talk to them engage with them rather than you know using these opportunities to score points right. let us be honest and let us rise above the right wing left wing divide you know there is there is it's interesting on a, on the day that asaram bapu's remarks have come in the public domain this is the day as you rightly said that the jamaat has also come up with this recommendation to a justice barma commission they've come up with recommendations on a dress code on 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 an end to co-ed schools has the time come to distance both these groups they are two sides of the same coin. The Jamaat on one side and the likes of Asaram Bapu on the other and the media has to target both with the same intensity. No, absolutely, Rajdeep. In fact, the, the irony, the beautiful irony of all this is that the RSS and the Muslim clergy 
are absolutely two faces of the same coin. Their attitude to women absolutely mirrors each other. They would like the woman to be back at the home. In fact, Mohan Bhagwat, in his great discourse on marriage contracts, says that marriages, uh, you know, are upheld when a woman uh, does the household chores and looks after the husband's earnings. You know, and it's only when she honors it that uh, honors this uh, role that a marriage stays intact. The Jamaat says that any consensual, pre-marriage consensual sex should be outlawed and made punishable by law. I mean, you know, the, and, and then you have Anurag Thakur, who also, so it's not just a generation, you know, you're saying that it's all people above 50. Unfortunately, this is just a very regressive way of thinking. And the, the thing to do is that, yes, you can talk to them, but their position will not change by us talking to them. It will change by internal rebellion within their own organizations, within their own families, by their own daughters and by their own sons. For the rest of us, we have to doggedly assert liberal values in this society because there can be no turning back the clock on that. Okay. You know? On that note, Shoma Chaudhary, Akar Patel, Rahul Ishwar joining us on our top talking point. If Asaram Bapu's followers are listening, well, really you have to raise serious questions as to why your leader is called a godman because clearly today he has shown he is no godman at all. Thanks very much for joining us on our top talking point. Let's